Hello students, I hope you're comfortable and ready to listen to um, my story today. Uh, I've chosen one of my favorites. I call it the secret of the White House swimming pool. It is about a swimming pool in the White House and there's a secret. To help you understand maybe a bit more what it's about, I've given you a subtitle. Why did journalists offer President Roosevelt a swimming pool? Think about it for a second. Journalists paid to give the president a swimming pool? You should find it a bit strange. I hope you do. It is extremely strange, but there is a very good reason behind their gift. And that reason is a secret. What I want us to do today is discover that secret. So let's start, shall we? First, let's have a look at the White House. You're probably thinking, I know what the White House looks like. Why, why is she telling me? I just want to make sure you never know, you know? So this is the White House, as you can see or can't see. Uh, there's no swimming pool to be seen because obviously, remember, it was a secret. Um, and the White House is the place where uh, American presidents usually live. Well, not usually, they live there. But very often they keep their house uh, in their home state. And that's what, um, that's what Roosevelt did. He had a big house with a big garden. And we'll see a picture of him, that garden, a bit later. Um, in his state of New York, because before he became president, he was the governor for the state of New York. Okay. Uh, now let's have a look at uh, the president, so Roosevelt. You may have heard that there, there were two presidents Roosevelt in America. The first one was Theodore Roosevelt. He was president between 1901 and 1909, and he had a crazy life, so maybe one day we should talk about him. Today we'll t we're talking about Franklin Roosevelt, and he was president between 1933 and 1945. Remember, if I tell you he was president in 1933, it means that he was elected in 1932. Uh, and to this day, this president, Franklin Roosevelt, is still, for Americans, in the top three of the best presidents of all time. He's there with Lincoln and Washington, so that's pretty big. He's extremely popular today. And, um, and well, you will see why maybe in a, in a minute. Uh, first, let's have a look at the swimming pool. We've seen the White House, we've seen the president. Now this is the swimming pool. It's the last element of uh, the mystery here. So as you can see, it's not a small swimming pool. It's big, it's a big gift. Uh, it was given in 1933, and that's interesting because it means that it was not given to him after he was president or during uh, his term in office. It was given to him at the very beginning of his presidency, and there's a reason for that. If you look at the caption, it reads, pool offered by the New York Daily News to President Roosevelt. So that swimming pool was given to him by people who came from New York, New York City, and the state of New York. So they knew him as governor. So these journalists knew something about him that made them go, okay, we should give that guy a swimming pool because in the White House, he should have a swimming pool. Let's now have a look, a closer look at uh, President Roosevelt. So on the left, you can see him campaigning and on the right, you can see him once he's president, he's giving a speech. I don't know if you can tell from uh, the two pictures here, but he was extremely popular at the time. We've established that he's popular today, still today with Americans. But at the time, remember, he was elected in 1932. In 1932, it's the middle of the Great Depression for America. These were very dark times. Uh, a quarter of the population was out of a job. The number of people who committed suicide had tripled. It was crazy. And for a lot of Americans, he was the new hope. Uh, they were very disappointed with the previous president. So he is the one for them who would bring change and bring hope. Um, and so that's why he was elected with uh, what we call a landslide. That means that a lot of people voted for him. And that's also why, well, maybe not that, but there is another reason why he, he was extremely popular once he was elected. He found a style that made him close to Americans. Let me explain. He decided to explain to Americans what the government was doing to help America get back on its feet. So he would talk to Americans. And we're in the 30s. It's not something that's very common. 
he would use the radio because at the time the radio was the new technology. He would use the radio um, on a regular basis to explain the new laws or the new rules that he wanted to implement. And he would explain them with very simple sentences so that Americans would understand. And so for Americans, first, being explained what was happening and second hearing his voice uh, in their homes on a regular basis it made them trust him and it made them believe in him so that's the other reason why he was extremely popular because people felt they could trust him so uh, now you've seen him you kind of know a bit more about him but still we don't know why people would give him a swimming pool so let's keep digging Maybe the reason is just that journalists liked him. And there's a reason why journalists would like him, because he loved journalists as well. He used to be a journalist. He was a journalist when he was a student. He was the editor-in-chief of, uh, of his newspaper uh, at Harvard. And so for him, journalists were his friends. And uh, I don't know if you can see here, this is the Oval Office. So it's the office of the president. Usually, you don't have that many people in the office. And when you answer... Uh, journalist question and you're the, the president of the United States, you don't do it like this. This was extremely different from uh, every other president before and after. Uh, just so you can understand how different it was, let me show you what um, a press conferences look like today. So that's a press conference. You have a press secretary and um, he or she, here it's a, it's a she, she was uh, Trump's second press secretary, uh, he or she answers or not, the questions uh, from uh, the journalists uh, that are there. And th so journalists raise their hands and, uh, and the press secretary chooses which one uh, will ask the question. So it's extremely formal. If you have a look, uh, if you remember the, the previous uh, picture, it was extremely informal. Everybody was just around, around him taking notes and he was sitting down and answering all their questions. Uh, sometimes presidents, too, uh, give press conferences. So it's not only press secretaries, but when it's a very important matter, presidents will answer a journalist's question. But once again, it's very formal. As you can see here, this is President Clinton, and he's standing in this special room made for, for press conferences, and he's answering journalists' questions. And it's always how it goes. So that's Clinton. That's Bush standing in front of journalists answering questions. That's Obama standing in front of journalists answering questions. That's Trump standing in front of journalists answering questions. And here, once again, you have Roosevelt on the right. See, he's sitting and, and laughing on the right. And with him are journalists. So his style was very different. He, he had a very good relationship with a journalist. So here they are in uh, his garden, in the Roosevelt's garden, in his own home. And they're having hot dogs. That's the sausages are in the pot on the on the table. And so that just shows you how close he was to journalists. And so the fact that they were close is not the reason why they got him a swimming pool, but it's a reason why they kept it a secret. Because the swimming pool had a very specific reason for it. And that reason is Roosevelt's secret. And you can find that secret in the next picture. Let me show you. Can you see the secret? Can you see Roosevelt's secret? Yeah, you saw it. Roosevelt was handicapped. He couldn't walk, he couldn't stand. Because when he was a bit younger, he got sick. He had polio, and so his legs didn't function properly. And he needed to exercise in water to make them work better. And that's the reason why he would he would use, he would need a swimming pool. And journalists knew about that. They knew about the fact that he was sick. They knew about the fact that he was handicapped. And instead of telling everybody, they decided instead to pay for a swimming pool so that he could exercise at the White House. I think it's just a pretty amazing story. Just the fact that journalists decided not to tell Americans because they trusted the guy and they wanted him to be able to do his exercise far away from, um, from uh, American eyes. Now, you're probably thinking, but I've seen him standing in the pictures. I don't understand. Let's have a look at the pictures again. In this picture, he's sitting. He's sitting here as well. Here, he's standing. Well, he's standing, but have a look. He's leaning on the stand, so he's clutching somewhere. He could um, not walk, but he could... Um, stay upright 
if he had a place where he could uh, he could uh, lean on. And that's something you'll see with the next picture. He had props as well. He had accessories to make sure that he would be able to stay uh, standing. Here you can see him walking down a ramp, but as you can see, he's not really walking. And the ramp was built just for him so he could go down the stairs and have a closer look. He's holding the ramps and can you see that there are braces? He's wearing braces to keep his legs um, straight and to make sure that he would stay upwards. So the braces you can see uh, sticking out uh, on the side of his shoes and also you kind of see the shape of uh, the upper part of the braces on his thighs and that's how far he was willing to go to hide his secrets from Americans because he knew that uh, if Americans knew about his um, handicap a lot of people would think he was weak. And so here you have uh, the building of, the, of the, the construction of the swimming pool. And um, once again, let's have a look at the fact that journalists refuse to tell anybody. And they refuse to tell anybody because they knew and trusted Roosevelt. And they believed that he would be the man to help America go through uh, the crisis of the Great Depression. And they were right. He managed to get America back on its feet. Later, he also drove America through World War II. So if we look at him now, we know that he was a great leader. And we know that uh, the fact that he was in a wheelchair didn't mean anything about uh, the... It had nothing to do with uh, the fact that he was a good or not a good president. And maybe today we even have uh, the opposite example. If we look at the current president, he's talking... He's talking tough. He wants to look tough. He, he wants to give an image of somebody who's extremely strong, but he's not managing to, um, to keep America whole. He's dividing Americans and he's making the country weaker. And if you look at what Roosevelt did, Roosevelt, um, he managed to bring America together and keep the country strong during one of the most difficult periods of its history. I mean, he went through the Great Depression and World War II, and then America became one of the most powerful countries on Earth. So he, even though a lot of people would have believed that he was weak because he was in a wheelchair, he was the opposite of that. He, uh, Roosevelt, was the perfect example that a leader does not need to be physically strong to, to make your country um, a great country. And so uh, we'll, we'll finish on, uh, on this uh, picture where he's with his wife. And we could talk about his wife too because she did amazing uh, things as well. Uh, but let's finish with uh, Roosevelt. So he died on uh, April 12th, 1945. So he died at the very end of the Second World War. And um, he died of natural causes. But... A lot of people believe that he was the victim of an Indian curse that had been uh, affecting American presidents for over a century. But that is another story. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.